don't know what memories that particular song stirs up in your heart and your memory, but for me it is at Vacation Bible School 65 years ago, whatever, 60 plus years ago, and each day we would march in singing Onward Christian Soldiers. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Our text, as we indicated, is the epistle reading from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 20. I'll focus right at this stage on these verses. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. This is the text. Dear Christian friends, in case you didn't notice it, we're in the midst of a spiritual battle. What's more, it's a lifelong battle. The enemy is relentless. There's no temporary ceasefire. There are times when we may doubt the very outcome. Those are times when we need to hear the words from one of my favorite hymns for all the saints. And when the strife is fierce, the warfare long, steals on the ear the distant triumph song. That word triumph is important. It speaks of a victory that has already been won. That would be Christ's victory over sin, death, and Satan. The victory which he won at the cross and the empty tomb. The victory which has become ours through our baptism into Christ and is fully realized at the last day. But as this verse states, it remains for us a distant triumph song. The word distant is what I would like to address now. Be honest. Doesn't the victorious message of the church often seem distant during the week? The triumph of our Lord, the mighty conqueror of sin, death, and Satan, who ascended above all rule and authority, above all power and dominion, can seem so distant. The triumph of the saints, you and I, who have been given the promise of things that I have not seen nor ear heard, that triumph can seem so distant. It seems so distant when there's trouble in the home, when a husband or wife storms out of the house, slamming the door behind them, or the kids are at each other's throats. How distant the triumph seems when you hear a conversation laced with profanity. Or when God, the Word of God, the things of God, or the people of God are held up to ridicule. How distant it seems when your body is racked with physical pain and modern medicine cannot alleviate it. When the doctor solemnly announces that there is no cure <coughs> for what ails you. How distant indeed when you stand at the graveside of a loved one. It must seem a distant triumph song in those areas of the world where Christians are enduring persecution of the most virulent, violent kind, including death. You can be sure of this, the devil wants Christ's triumph song to become so distant from your daily life that it can no longer be heard at all. It is the devil, after all, who stands behind the skirmishes and battles we Christians find ourselves in. St. Paul reminds us in today's epistle lesson that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. For the sake of you who have heard me say this, particularly in Bible class, I think that's an example of dialectic negation. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Well, yeah, in a, in a sense we do. But it's not just against flesh and blood, but especially, and that's where he goes on, but against the rulers and so forth. It's a both hand, but the accent is on against the rulers, the spiritual forces of evil. 
There is more facing off against you than some flesh and blood human troublemaker. Satan is your ultimate enemy. He stands at the head of a powerful, invisible army of evil spirits who are intent upon nothing less than your eternal destruction. Martin Luther refers to this opponent in his hymn, A Mighty Fortress, when he says, Though devils all the world should fill, all eager to devour us. You see, the enemy is not just that quarrelsome person you can't get along with. It's not just somebody's improper conduct or conversation. We're not just struggling against bodily ailments or visits to the cemetery. Those are just the front men that Satan and his hosts would use to pull us away from God. It's the spiritual forces of evil that are our greatest threat. If the triumph song of Christ and the saints seems distant at times, you can be sure that Satan is trying to take that song completely from your heart and life. In light of all this, in light of what we face, St. Paul says, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. Arm yourselves, he says. With what, we ask? With the latest self-help book? Or is it with better financial, medical, and physical resources? With human solutions? No, Paul says. God is your strength for battle. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. Put on the whole armor of God. Rely on Him. Paul identifies this armor in verses 13 through 17 of the epistle lesson. Therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand firm. Stand therefore having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Here is armor that can keep the triumph song alive in your life and mine. God's truth is the belt around your waist. The truth that is our defensive armor is Christ's truth. Indeed, Christ himself, who is the way, the truth, and the life. With truth as our weapon, we can defeat the devil, the slanderer, as his name implies, who schemes to deceive us with his lies. One of those lies that currently circulates, promoted by a whole culture of his victims, is that my truth, or even your truth, can supplant the Word of God. Your heart is protected by the breastplate of righteousness. Make no mistake, this is not the Christian's achieved righteousness, but that righteousness that God bestows through Christ. Not what we have done, our righteous deeds, which are no better than filthy rags, Isaiah. But what Christ has done for us. Let Satan, the old accuser, try to condemn you for your sins. He can't succeed because you are covered in the righteousness of Christ that he won for us, won for you on the cross. Your feet says Paul, are fitted and ready with the gospel of peace. You go from battle to battle, from struggle to struggle, with the peace that comes from Christ's triumph song. It's the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, because the love which stands behind it is so great that it goes beyond our comprehension. A love so great. 
In your daily battles, you have the shield of faith, faith to deflect Satan's arrows. Satan tries to barrage our thoughts with all kinds of questions, temptations, or doubts. Am I really a Christian? Do I still believe? Is God punishing me for something I did wrong? With faith as our shield, we can deflect those flaming arrows as we fall back on the promises of God. Whoever comes to me, I will never cast out. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Just a few of God's rainbow of promises. You have a glorious helmet of salvation. Salvation today and salvation forever with the triumphant Christ. No matter how difficult the situation we face, sickness, persecution, pain, or death, we are already more than conquerors through Him who loved us. Finally, you have a sword, God's Word. With God's Word, you unleash the power of the conquering Christ on those daily problems that Satan would like to use to work your destruction. Our Lord, you'll recall, masterfully wielded the sword of God's word when he overcame Satan and his temptations in the wilderness. To succeed, you will need to read, mark, learn, and take to heart God's word. A little while ago I quoted from Luther's hymn, A Mighty Fortress, but I only quoted the line about devils filling the, filling the whole world. Listen now to the full quotation. Though devils all the world should feel all eager to devour us, we tremble not, we fear no ill, they shall not overpower us. This world's prince may still scowl feel fierce as he will, he can harm us none. He's judged. The deed is done. One little word can fell him. Those two are the lyrics of a triumph song. They instill in us the courage to be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Luther's words give the inspiration to put on the whole armor of God. They tell us that the battle has been won by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's what his life of perfect obedience means for us. That's what Good Friday and Easter are all about. The fact that the weapons which we put on are defensive rather than offensive in nature is a reminder that the battle is the Lord's. The fight is his to win. As Luther reminds us, with might of ours cannot be done, soon were our loss effected. He continues, but for us fights the valiant one whom God himself elected. Christ is the one who fights for us, and Christ has already won the victory. By faith we claim his victory as our own. Earlier we drew attention to the word distant, distant triumph song. <coughs> now let's hear the whole stanza. And when the strife is fierce, the warfare long, steals on the ear the distant triumph song, and hearts are brave again, and arms are strong. Alleluia, alleluia. In the midst of our daily battles against Satan, we do still hear the lyrics of the triumph song. When the evil foe lets fly his arrows, when we would forget that Christ has won the victory, when the distant triumph song could become a mere whisper, then the armor of God's strength renews us for the conquest. He puts it on piece by piece as it comes to us in word and sacrament. 
in the final analysis, it's Christ that we put on. The very one we put on in our baptism. As Paul writes to the Galatians, for as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Ignatius, one of the early church fathers, picks up this theme in a paraphrase of our text. Be pleasing to him whom you serve as a soldier, from whom you also receive your wages. Let none of you be found a deserter. Let baptism remain as your arms, faith as your helmet, love as your spear, endurance as your full armor. His warning against desertion reminds us of Paul's admonition to stand firm and withstand. Ignatius himself was no deserter as he died the death of a martyr. Today and each day that we gather in the divine service, God serving us with his gifts, we hear anew the triumph song of Christ. We hear of the one who died but rose victorious. We hear anew as well the triumph song of the saints who from their labors rest, who have lay down their arms and sing with the angels. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Those words from Revelation 5 verse 12 are the scriptural basis for the hymn of praise that we will sing, this is the, that we sang, which is, this is the feast. One day we will join them in that song in the new heaven and new earth. For now we unite our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven in praising God as part of the divine service. Keep the song of triumph alive. Put on God's armor, the whole armor of God, every last piece is vital. Wear it as your daily dress and keep on wearing it. To borrow a phrase from a familiar commercial, don't leave home without it. Be strong in the Lord, not in your strength, but His. Go forward in that strength, but don't go it alone. Remember, you have brothers and sisters in Christ marching with you. Most important of all, you have Christ the victor leading you onward. So onward, Christian soldiers. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus.